Welcome to a new Project Calm video. So in this video series, we usually go out there to visit the community and learn from their experiences and just research on what could be done and could be improved. Except this time we're going to do it slightly different because we're not going to go out there, but we're going to visit our own community, which is set up in the last year when we developed a new version for Precious Plastic. So it's based in the Netherlands in a city called Eindhoven. And we started about a year ago in this old empty building. It's right in the middle of the city, like really right in the middle. And before it was an old car garage. And then it's been empty for a long time. Uh, so we transformed it into our workspace. We wanted to make a new version of Precious Plastic. We didn't plan a community, we just invited people to work. But yeah, they needed to sleep, work and eat. So we had to figure this all out. What time do we have dinner? How do we sleep? How do we chill? Where do we shower? Everything. So we learned a lot about this whole process and it's been a very good test run for Project Cam. So let me show you all the things we've learned. Hey, welcome to the workspace. Here is where we've been working for the past years with like designers, engineers, developers, architects, chefs, coordinators. And these are people that come from all over the world. They come from different cultures with different expertise, different expectations. And they're all here for one reason, because we all care about the environment. And here particularly we work on plastic uh, to develop solutions to the plastic problem. And uh, that's one thing that, sh that, that, that we all share, is that we uh, know the world is kind of fucked, but we also know that there are a lot of solutions that can be developed to fix all of these big problems that we are facing. And moving forward here, we have the studio where we develop all the digital solutions to, uh, to help people tackle this problem. There's a vegan kitchen where we, that feeds us every day with incredible food. And over there is the workspace where we develop all the machines and tools for people to use around the world. And Jan is going to show you all the magic that happens in there every single day. Hey. So we are in the workspace, as you can uh, hear, very noisy and also messy place, particularly with close to deadlines. But I will make you like a quick tour. So here we are in the metal working area, when we will have uh, all our metal stock, drill press, grinders, milling machine, lathe, chop saw, everything needed to work with metal. And on the other side of the workspace, we have more our uh, woodworking area. And then in the middle, the, the center of the workspace are where we keep all our tools. So how does it work? So we start every morning at 10 by a quick meeting that lasts from 10 to 20 minutes. And basically we use this meeting to coordinate ourselves. It can be to coordinate ourselves for using the machines, for going to buy some stuff, for using the van to go to scrapyard or to go to metal shop or anything. So everyone in the workspace have a particular project and every week we meet all together to, to discuss our previous week goals and next week's goals. But recently we talked more about that. So at the beginning of the year we created this wall to, to write down the goals, the individual goals that each person is working uh, and have to achieve. Um, so for instance uh, we have the weekly goals the monthly goals and the long-term goals to help keep uh, an overview of what everybody is working on. And uh, we are, every Monday morning, we divide ourselves in the product design team, the workspace area and the studio area. And uh, we discuss which are um, the objectives of the week, is they are feasible, how are we going to make them, if it's re um, uh, realistic or if not. And that's pretty much about the two. Hi, I'm Kat. When we arrived here, um, there was nothing here and things first had to be set up. And people started working and more and more people started coming. And working with a lot of people together easily gets messy as well. So together we came up with some ways how to uh, make that working together easier and, and better. Let me just show you some of that. So this is our schedule. We start at 9 with breakfast and 10 with work um, and then have lunch and dinner, snack and dinner. Um, and that's just for everyone to know roughly when to be here for what. Then we have cleaning teams. Uh, so everyone is in one cleaning team and has one day a week. 
So I am in the monkey team, I am cleaning on Friday. Here we can always see our current team, we have 48 people, that's a lot. And then we have our calendar, which uh, gives us the overview of pe when are pe people leaving and coming and uh, whose birthday it is. And then with so many people, you easily lose the overview of who is actually working on what and responsible for what. So we made an overview of, um, of who is working in which area, like digital uh, communication machines, kitchen, food, product design. Um, so people know who to ask and where they are working on. And to keep everything a bit uh, clean, we have every evening at 7 clean up, clean up time. So we ring this bell and we shout, clean up time! Just joking! <laughs> so this is the daily stuff and as we are still very much in, in progress of figuring out how to uh, how to work together in a good way and things might not always run very smoothly we also have a weekly come together and a monthly community day where people can complain and uh, give suggestions and just bring their wonderful and weird uh, ideas how we can make things better so this is all the work related stuff we do in here to stay productive but we also need to sleep and eat so let me show you how that's done, and first we go into the kitchen. We are in the precious plastic kitchen. I'm Kati. I'm Aggie. And we are cooking here for over 50 people every day twice. Lunch and dinner. Yeah, some days more. Yeah. We cook vegan food. We getting our food from the market. Uh, and we also ordering our food in bulk. Huge amounts. Okay, so we have everything really huge because we have a lot of people here we're eating together twice dinner is happening outside right now that's all our team thank you Jerry. there you go <laughs> and what's the food people like the most uh, peanut butter peanut butter there's a huge peanut butter fight and what yeah what do people like the least hmm Cleaning up after open baked potatoes. <laughs> Huge complaints. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm going to show you today where we're living. We have 10 houses in the north of Eindhoven, 10 minutes cycling from the workspace. And we can, we live, this guy lives with us. <laughs> hey, we live in this neighbor. We got 10 houses here and one in this square. And we got one van, two, three, four vans. I'm gonna show you inside. Oh man. Boy is sleeping. <laughs> this room is built building. It was a big living room. But Paul decided to live in the living room. So he built it. And it's linked to the kitchen. And we got Nico. <laughs> this house has uh, got Wi-Fi, it's the only one. So all the people come here to work during the week because the workspace is too loud and crazy. So people can relax, have a lot of tea because the name of this house is Tea House. So you can come, choose your tea, boil it and make it. And we got... <laughs> 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 she lives in the garden room <laughs> with this guy. <laughs> so we go. <laughs> we made our uh, garden, and Nico made uh, the tomato field, and we got the pumpkins. I don't know how, but we have pumpkins, and we got people sleeping in the garden room, like Julie. She. Build it just a little bit. She just isolated a little bit and she have a small heater, I think. And she got the vacuum cleaner. This is a <laughs> rare piece of the houses. It's the only one that we have, so people have to share. We have a channel for that. Where is the vacuum cleaner? <laughs> and also Glicaria also has it for clean the house. And we just we go once. And then we can go through the halle.
this uh, was luck, but Paco need the Wi-Fi, so <laughs> he take it off. So now the tea house is linked to all the other house. And if you see this sign, it means it's us. Mm -hmm. So you can just open the door, walk in, and welcome to Kevin. Is Jason no. sleeping there? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> He's dreaming about sheet press. And then we got Jason stuff under the rain. We got an amazing garden. And this is the most inspiring house. Uh, the first rules are Kevin, you have to draw on the, on the wall. So this is uh, almost one year of painting. And we used to do cinema. Like this. But now we're changing marshmallow. So no more here. And yeah, we got Kevin. And uh, plus it's recycle. It's cool. cool. It's crazy. <laughs> you don't talk about washing. Instead of changing, you don't talk about the washing machine. You don't talk about the we don't know who write that. <laughs> so here Sarah from the Netherlands is fucking raining. <laughs> and yeah, our house in like two months, they're gonna become like this. They're gonna close all our 10 houses. And we're gonna be homeless. So pay in Patreon, give us $2 or more. <laughs> so we're gonna have a new house. And it was amazing being in these houses. The neighbor is amazing. And it's raining here. So I gotta back to the workspace. That's easy. All right, so that's basically the current infrastructure we set up, how we live, work, and eat together. Um, and over the year, we learned quite a few things. And I wrote them down on my hand so I don't forget. So the first thing I would say, it's been quite intense, living and working with the same people in the same space uh, for one year long. It's just, uh, yeah, require quite some mental energy and you really need to make sure you have time for yourself. Bulk food, I really like bulk food. It's hard for me to go back to individual food because it requires much more packaging, it's much more expensive. And in bulk amounts, you can really buy straight from the farmer. So, big fan of bulk food. Shared bikes. Uh, originally, we wanted to have a few bicycles that people could share. Didn't work at all. The bicycles were always broken, no one took responsibility. So we ended up that everyone just has their own bike. We didn't have an HR manager or something like that, which you would usually find in a company to make sure everyone stays happy. Um, so we were really lucky that we had a group of very flexible people that figured it out themselves, made sure if they had problems that they would bring it up. Um, so yeah, I would say that's not always the case that it would work out like that, but I think we've been lucky with that one. Deadline. So we had quite a tight one because we had one year to develop Precious Plastic version 4. So towards the end it became much more intense and we really needed to get our stuff done which is not necessarily nice. It really becomes a very much work-focused environment. And in the beginning, it was a bit more community-oriented as well. Um, so I would say next time, maybe less tight of a deadline. Now, these are a few points that I personally learned during this time, but I also gathered a few feedback from members here in the community. That it's intense as fuck. Intense as strawberry with salt and sugar. A lot of challenges from the food to the intense way of living. Sometimes, I mean, okay, what might have been difficult would have been uh, getting some alone time. I would say privacy. I think after a while it's really intense, like we live in this kind of bubble and we always see the same people and we have the same schedule. So especially at the weekends, I, uh, if I could, I didn't come uh, here in the workspace. I uh, had long walks, just like alone, and uh, in silence. So uh, by the end of the weeks, I appreciated silence a really lot. Yeah, sometimes it could be hard, or like when there is like a lot of meeting or like community meeting and you're just like... <sighs> yeah, and the whole cleaning up, is a, was always a big thing, like who cleaned up what, why do I always have to clean up the one saw and why does like, yeah, like maintenance of machines and stuff like this. 
trying to find that balance between creating a system that works for everyone while still catering to the individual needs of uh, particular people and like what time do you work best? What time do you like to eat? Um, who doesn't want to clean up at this time? Who'd rather go home at that time? And I also miss home and, and that kind of part, I think. Um, teams burps um, and Adrian sarcastic way of talking. People, basically. People. Uh, ping pong. <laughs> I really, I love to eat all the meals with a lot of people. Being part of something that feels um, more meaningful. Definitely this kind of sense of anything's possible and like we can, we can make a big difference here. Uh, making sure we clean up at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of an activity. I think that's the most community-based day is like the one day we have to clean. Yeah, for me, like when I arrived, what I, what I was really surprised about, it was like the power of co-creation. When we, when we made progress, I really liked that. So when we solved the problem. Being able to work with common-minded people towards a common goal, um, and then also existing within that group, of, the same group of people, um, I think is really beneficial to, I guess, the development of a project. We were a lot of people that have a lot of things in common. So maybe also that makes us like uh, connect with each other very well. That eventually they have to become friends. There's like no way around becoming friends. I love living in a community and I, I actually can't really imagine myself going back and just owning a whole apartment in my own and yeah, going back to how it was before. Several months later. <laughs> 